All right, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon here in California. Good evening there in Washington, D.C., and welcome early in the morning in Israel there in the Holy Land. God bless you and thank you for being a part of this show today. I just heard a bell ring, and that means someone just joined us on the air. Who joined us? Emily from Maryland. Emily from Maryland. God bless you, my dear sister. Thank you for joining us here on the Wiley Drake Show today. We're broadcasting live. We're expecting uh, another uh, person to come on a little bit to talk about her ministry and so forth. But while we're waiting for her to call, uh, we want to say welcome to Emily from Maryland and uh, welcome to her as a vigilant prayer warrior. Ladies and gentlemen, I know, Emily knows, all of you know that it's easy sometimes to get discouraged. But I'm here to remind me, first of all, because sometimes I can get discouraged. But I'm here to remind me that God's still in control. God still deals with all the problems that come in our life. And God still helps us work our way through. And I want to say thank you to Emily. I want to say thank you to Brother David Myers, who's on the line with us tonight. Also, David is here as the pastor to David's Tabernacle in Buena Park. Now, I want to make sure I don't confuse anyone. There is a David's Tent in Washington, D.C., and there is a David's Tent here in Buena Park. David's Tent, or Tabernacle, was set up over three years ago, three years in a row, and now since 9-11... Our dear brother in the Lord, Jason Hershey, has been facilitating that tabernacle, David's Tent, D.C. You can go online and follow that and find that if you'd like. But we decided that we needed a David's Tent, i.e. a tabernacle. We use the word tabernacle because that's the Hebrew word. And um, we use that because as we began to decide what to do, David's Tent is a very large tent sort of like what Dr. Graham used to use for revivals. But uh, we felt like, since we were much smaller, that it would be more appropriate if we tried to follow the example that we get in a word picture in the Bible. And when you go on the line and you see uh, men's idea of what the tabernacle looked like, we tried to follow that as much as we could. And so that's why we call it a tabernacle. But Jason Hershey is a mighty man of God and has a mighty ministry there in D.C. And uh, we thank the Lord for him. Do we have anyone else that's joined us other than Emily? All right. We do thank you for joining us tonight and thank you for being a part of the Wiley Drake Show. This is what we call the CCC, Congressional Communications Channel. And those three words describe what I hope God will allow me to lead us to do. And that is from a congressional point of view. Congress, that is made up of the Senate, and the United States House of Representatives. There is in the Senate a senator, two senators from each state. We pray for them every day by first and last name. But there's also in the Senate a man of God, a pastor, a former admiral in the United States Navy, go Navy. And uh, his name is Chaplain Barry Black. He was a chaplain in the United States Navy and is a chaplain now for, I think, almost 10 years in the United States Senate. And so he's a great, mighty man of God, opening the Senate from time to time in prayer, leading other pastors to open the Senate in prayer, inviting your pastors and others to be there. And so I would encourage you to pray for Chaplain Black. And I would encourage you to pray for his dear staff. He's got a young lady that works there that does a great job for him. I believe her name is Jody. And Jody, we thank the Lord for you 
and we thank the Lord for the rest of your staff there in the Senate Chaplain's Office. Now, we have a lot to pray for, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I want to give my callers an opportunity to share what they would like us to pray for. So, Emily, anything you'd like to share with us, go right ahead. that um, our country is protected from this president we have. I really think he's evil. I was reflecting on um, some things that I know about the president just before I got on the phone, and I just made a list of all the scandals, fast and furious, and God, and everything I could live that would somehow tie him to being a Muslim and all of that, and then I looked at some other things, and I was, you know, I just made a list, a brief list of things I knew about him. And then I said to myself, you know, this guy it could be anything. This is in his book, Charity. All right. Uh, Emily, oh. Emily there in Maryland, if you would hold on just for a moment. We have a lady that I had already scheduled to be on the line with us. And you're welcome, Emily, to stay on with us. But we do have uh, this dear sister, Elizabeth Charity. And I did invite her to come on, and she is on the line with us now. And uh, Elizabeth, uh, tell us where you're from, would you please? Oh, I'm from Virginia. From Virginia. Okay, now. Yeah, Wood, Woodbridge, Virginia. Woodbridge, Virginia. Well, Emily is on from Maryland, and I'm on from California. And we have David from David's Tent here in California on with us. And uh, we've just been talking about the tragedy of the current occupant of the White House. And I would like to know uh, about uh, Elizabeth Charity and uh, who she is and what God has called her to do. Would you mind sharing that with us? Okay. Elizabeth Charity um, is, um, I love reaching out and helping people. I'm a, I'm a minister. I'm cool. Of the gospel. I'm a radio producer. I'm a TV producer. I'm a writer. I'm an entrepreneur. But most of all, I'm a servant of the Most High God. Amen. Uh, I, uh, it's not because the last, I say it was since 2009, I say to God and having me homeless on purpose. It was part of a ministry that he had put me into. Uh, here I was at the age of 60 years old, and I found myself unemployed and homeless. Mm. I had many years of working as the CEO and founder of a nonprofit organization, Youth Army Services, that helped actors, teenagers, and young adults who had been in trouble with their law and homeless. I had volunteered in the juvenile detention center for the past 20 years. In 2009, I lost my home, my car, and all of my contracts for my nonprofit organization. During that time, while I was living with family and friends, I continued to minister to the Mrs. Fortune. And in 2012, God sent me to George Mason University as a homeless widow grandma. Mm. He instructed me to write my own degree, Bachelor of Individualized Study, with a concentration in social entrepreneurship. Living on campus of George Mason University, I was able to mingle with the college students and organize a student-led organization called the Social Entrepreneurship Society. The students decide on a social issue in which they have passion for and to do fundraising to raise money to help them bring about positive social changes. George Mason University organization focused on criminology, law, and society. Their majors were in art. Their majors are in sociology, criminology, and psychology. Mm -hmm. Their goals are to help.
help mentor and to educate their peers in the system as they research the evidence to reduce recidivism or to just break that behavior pattern that keep getting them into jail. Mm -hmm. I graduated from George Mason University in May 2015, and I started Youth Corporation Inc., which is owned and operated by the college students and businesses where they can help train, mentor, and educate those who are social injustice challenged or in the system. Let me stop you there, Je ma'am. Let me stop you there just for a minute. Give me the name once again so all of our audience can get it down. Uh, your uh, youth, what it started with the word youth. What is that organization? It's Youth Corporation Inc. slash Youth Outreach Services. All right. Thank you very much for that. And we do want to put that down in writing so we can know how to pray for you. And uh, tell us mm -hmm. more. Tell us more about how this benefits. And, you know, some people have said uh, many folk are one paycheck away from being homeless themselves, and we have a lot of homeless people. That's what we do. We have a homeless shelter. We minister to poor and homeless here in our area as well as around the world, but primarily here in California. But uh, tell our listening audience what, uh, what your corporation uh, now that it's incorporated, what it can do to help these that are in dire need. Okay. Implementing the marketing strategy for this corporation and developing an investment program will create jobs for the homeless, the unemployed, and provide a social economic relief in destitute places. And at the same time, we give businesses a positive felicity on the web, international, and local through television advertisement. The way we do this is Truth IV Services, which is the nonprofit side, has a 12 week job readiness mentoring program where well, the first five weeks, the students, the psychologists, and the social workers do assessment to transform, educate, and mentor those who are social justice injustice challenge. The last seven weeks, we have businesses to come and provide workshops for the students to put them in job placement, whilst the college students actually videotape the workshop and give businesses positive publicity on the website and local television station. What has happened is George Mason, since I graduated in, 2000, uh, in May 2015, they have continued the student-led organization, and her name is Dr. Faye S. Taxman, and her team has provided $100,000 of in-time support for guidance and evidence-based to do the research and treatment. Dr. Faye Taxman is also George Mason faculty advisor for the Social Entrepreneurship Society, and the students there help bring about criminal justice reform. She is also the director of George Mason University Center for Advancing Correctional Excellency and a professor at the Department of Criminal Knowledge, Law, and Society. What she is doing is she's continuing to work with the students there, and they, in turn, will be coming to my organization, the Duke Corporation and Duke Ivy Services, in which I will train them the 12-week program, and they, in turn, will help teach, will help teach the Edwards Duke in, that is coming out of the alternative school and their desire is to go into the juvenile detention center to, uh, to teach that 12-week program. And I go, while I was at George Mason University, we had a group of students that actually uh, to design a facility to be used as we call a non-traditional career center that would create 150 jobs within the first year and 
1,500 jobs over the three years that we do our study and research. Amen. Well, uh, listen, let me, let, me, let me interrupt you again uh -huh. just for a moment, uh, and, and uh, because I'm quite sure that uh, we have a lot of our audience all over the world that are students, maybe even mm -hmm. beginning students or students halfway through. Uh, if they're interested in what you're saying here, and if I were a student, I tell you what, I'd really be interested. I'm interested in seeing what God's going to do. Uh, but if, I, if a student is listening and they would like to check this out further, how's the best way for them to get in touch with you? They can get in contact with me by um, calling me at 571-314-7503 or they can visit my website at www.ycwos.org. All right, now let me also, let me add. Hang on, hang on a minute. Hang on. Other website. Okay, go ahead. And this is www.wesharecrowdfunding.com. Okay. Backslash she church. Well, both of those websites which direct them directly to uh, our, uh, how they can contact me in plus, like I said, they have this, uh, my uh, telephone number. But we also have the, my email address, the Elizabeth, E L I Z A B E T H dot charity, C A J R I T Y, at Y C I Y O S dot org. All right, now let me ask you to do this one more time for our folks because people are listening in on their computer and their iPad and sometimes they don't get all of the stuff very clear. But l let me ask you to give your phone number one more time and if they're having trouble, they can call you and talk to you uh, after you're off the show. Now, what's that phone number again? 571 314 7503. All right, folks. 571 314 7503. And that's Elizabeth Charity's uh, telephone number. And I told you she was a woman of integrity. There would be some women and some men that would come on a TV show like this around the world and they say, oh, I don't want to give out my phone number. I don't want to give my phone number to everybody. Well, here's a lady who is a, a, a woman of integrity and a woman that says, if you need help, uh, call me at 571-314-7503. Call her and tell her uh, what's on your heart and ask her about the websites and all those kinds of things. But now, Elizabeth, go on a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Elizabeth Charity on with me. And she's going to share even further about this organization she has uh, called Youth Corporation uh, Incorporated and so forth. So tell us a little bit more about how these young people can advance themselves through this system. Would you please? Yes. What we would do is we would have them to come in and we would have the college students that actually uh, – teach that 12-week program. The first, as I told you, the first five, uh, five weeks deal with um, them actually learning what's going on within themselves. Yes. In other words, we use psychology, sociology, and criminology to really to transform that mind or that way of thinking. Mm -hmm. We also use the word we call the word of God. So we give them inspiration changing. We, we'll be able to pray with them. We have psychologists on that, so we'll be able to like uh, uh, counsel them so they're not licensed. And what is so nice about this is during this time is where the college students would be able to say they would be getting experience in that field that they're going to school to graduate from, mm -hmm. uh, from the university. So we not we want to not only start it at George Mason University, but we want to be able to hook up each non uh, each judicial system to a college in that area. Amen. Uh, we started like 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 George Washington. We have a real apartment with George 
Washington uh, University in Washington, D.C. We want to hook it up with the uh, youth and the, uh, those who are into a challenge socially and uh, uh, at, at risk in Washington, D.C. In Richmond, Virginia, we're working with VCU students. And like I said, this is a twofold thing. This is where the college students can education and they will be able to share their experience with them. And the offenders who are in this system are also getting skills, job skills, in which they will be able to come out and be able to um, work. Because what they would do is, uh, their goal is to then train for them from thinking that they have to use their talents and gifts illegal and use it the right way to produce, to uh, provide a paycheck. Well, you know what? Uh, here not too long ago, I had a fellow that was here involved in our ministry, and we do a similar ministry in a different way, not nearly as educational as yours, but we do help people get on their feet and get jobs and get back in the workday uh, situation. And uh, one of the fellows used to have this little saying, and I come up with a lot of little sayings for the TV show. I say, for example, if you do your best, God will do the rest. But this guy came yeah. up. This guy came up with another saying about people who have wrong kind of thinking, and they're thinking, "Well, I can't do that, uh, or I can't go to get a higher education, or I'm not." Ca they have that kind of thinking, and he would say to those young people and those of us that aren't so young, he would say to them, "When you get that kind of thinking, that's your problem." You have stinking, right. you have stinking thinking. <laughs> That's right. That's and, right. And That's it, right. And when you get over that stinking thinking, then you go to God who has a sweet fragrance for us to serve him through his word. And that's one of the reasons, ladies and gentlemen, I invited this dear woman on here, not only because it would be good, i.e., educationally, psychologically, and sociologically, but it would be even better because of the Word of God. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't mean this to be uh, self-aggrandizing, but I have a degree in psychology, and I'm thankful I do. I have a degree in sociology, and I'm thankful that I do. I have a degree in communications, and I'm thankful to the Lord that he gave me that. Not bad for a little boy in Arkansas who took him two years to get through the ninth grade, but... Uh, I changed my thinking, and I've been trying to think the way the Lord would think. And that's why I've mm -hmm. been trying to pass that along. And that's why I was so excited to hear not only was this dear lady doing a good job psychologically and sociologically and even entrepreneurially, but she was doing it based on the authority of God's holy, and righteous word. And that's most important uh, to the Wiley Drake Show, and I believe most important to God, and I believe that's why her ministry is going to be successful, is because she's bathing it in the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I have on mm -hmm. with me Elizabeth Charity. Elizabeth, share with us whatever else the Lord has laid on your heart. Okay. What I'm asking you to do is we are asking companies, corporations, foundations, churches, schools, and organizations to match Dr. Faye X. Taxman uh, $100,000 in kind of service. We're not asking you to give $100,000. We're just asking you to give whatever you can to help us create a world for many people. Uh, Hey, Mark, we're on the show right now. Uh, we would Could like to call open back up. A little later? We would like to open up an, an office yeah. in Prince William County. We're in the middle of an interview right now, so if you could call back oh, later. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay Miss Elizabeth, I'm we, sorry. I had a we, caller, we, but go ahead. Huh? I said. Well, okay. We'd like, we'd like to open up an office in Prince William County and where we can be able to, we can actually, 
as I told you before, the students have actually designed a facility in which they want to build. And this facility would give them uh, skills in construction, plumbing, uh, air conditioning, and heating. And we got some companies that have already said that they will come in and help with that. Amen. Wow. Yes, we already have companies. We, we even have uh, what is the, uh, because one of the construction companies that's going to help is um, Whitening Turner. But we, we need we need some finances for to be able to to say oh to to operate like the electric the the water bill and get the supplies that we need we need like a real estate lawyer we need um, uh, businesses who want to come in and give workshops and those workshops that we're looking for is like an auto auto detailing. The students will learn how to also detail. And what they do is they will actually create uh, a commercial for you. Say, for instance, I'm going to give you an example. Say, for instance, one of the auto detailers would uh, take them, that they, he was sponsor. Now, the sponsorship, we say it starts from $500 all the way to 10000 But for five, just say for $500, this the individual who is sponsoring the child will also uh, go through, say, financial classes. So mm -hmm. we teach them how to invest, how to open a checking account, savings account. And for that $500, they will be able to go, say, attend that class with them, get a certificate. But when they finish that class, when that child finish that class, he will be able to get $125 back. Mm. But he, so he can be able to start his own savings account, what Amen. we call the building block. Amen. And that way, we're, so we are teaching them how to be entrepreneurs, but at the same time, we're teaching them how to invest. But also learning about auto detailing. Say, for instance, uh, uh, again, that also detail and decide he want to get $2,500. Okay, $1,250 will go to the college student for internship, and the other $1,250 will go toward for the, to pay the tuition for the at-risk youth. So that at-risk youth and the college student will create a commercial. Mm -hmm. Say, for instance, uh, they would say, um, hey, uh, they'll be watching the, the call wheel and they say, hey, my check this auto detail and just turn my life around. Mm -hmm. This is brought to you by my justice detailing. Yeah, amen. See how, see how everybody is a You really have a lot of vision for this. I think that's wonderful that you have such a uh, detailed and clear vision for this type of um, you know, ministry organization. I think it's wonderful. Amen. We want to start it in Maryland too, by the way. <laughs> so we, yeah, well, you know, uh -huh. I would actually use we would actually use the uh, University of Maryland. I've already contacted individuals there. So we, we like I say that we want to get, we we starting here in Virginia because that's where you know I live right right now. And I'm be honest with you, I'm still, I'm still homeless. I'm keeping on my southern sofa right now as I try to put this thing together. <laughs> Bless your heart. I'm sleeping on my son's sofa. As I say, I'm, I'm enjoying my I'm enjoying my grandchildren. But it, it would be nice, you know what I'm saying, to be able to say just move forward with this as we uh, as we be able to say open up the do uh, the doors in a much further way to help our students. Well, also there are a lot of young people to uh, teenagers and college students to, um, you know, the economy so bad. I think all this trade, tra especially, and also, um, you know, the uh, African-American youth, a lot of them would benefit from learning a trade, I think. They wouldn't have to go, they don't have to go to college. You know, that's and right. Plumbing, that's plumbing is good money. A lot of people just don't have the smart for college. I that's think right. it's excellent. And I 
and apparently we're going to love it as black youth off the street and doing something constructive. Okay, so that's the whole lot That's the whole lot of And do yeah, you think that? Wonderful. Not only that, we will be able to do black culinary, culinary arts. We also mm -hmm. cosmetology and barber. So this is what the students, the college students have did. We want to purchase this piece of property to be able to uh, create, to build this facility on it, and it will have also detailer there. It will have culinary arts there. It will have a uh, 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 a little cafe shop there, it would have a cosmetology there, and it would have a barber school. We have cybersecurity and computer technology, and the students have already designed it. We just need to get the piece of property and to build it on there. It was for the start that and to to get that done, the start up is just about one hundred and ten thousand dollars. It's, and I don't think that's very, that's very much for this, what we're doing. <laughs> wow, you yeah, have it all planned out. I think that's wonderful. It's, just it's, not, it's not much. In, in other words, if you got a thousand people out there, if we could get, uh, say, a hundred people to just to do the 500 jobs, that's enough money right there, as you said, to be halfway there. You see what I'm saying? It's just a hundred dollars that we have to. So what we're saying is, go to our uh, we www we share craft funding, and we have the story there. And all you have to do is just add money right there on the site, or either go to our other site, and you'll see the story there. It will even show you of all the, all the people who have worked for we have worked with in the past 25 years. And, and, and how they have uh, helped us to get as far as we have. Because we have, we have opened up, uh, we have run other centers like in Richmond, in, um, Dump, in uh, Triangle, Virginia, and even in Washington, D.C. But I had to let it go when I went back to school to really to get my degree. And it's really, I really want to just care to another level. Well, you know, ladies, wow. well, ladies, it's... it's mm -hmm. That's how I it. Well, thank you, ladies, for sharing with us uh, from your perspective. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is what we're about here on the Wiley Drake Show. Uh, we're very entrepreneurial. We have, a, we have a church here. We also have the Congressional Prayer Conference. But we also have people that have come in. In fact, the matter is, I'm sort of waiting right now, for example, for one of our men to come back. He's been gone for a while because he's been very successful in his rehabilitation and re-employment, but he was a mechanic, and he was doing mechanic work here, and I happen to have a, an extra car that I try to use to help other people, and right now I can't do that because it's broken down. But my mechanic, mm. is, my mechanic is coming back over the weekend and going to try to get my car back running. Well, this is the kind of thing... All right. This is the kind of thing that can happen. This is the kind of thing that this schooling, this organization, Youth Corporation Incorporated, can train people not only how to detail, detail a car, but repair a car and do other uh, right. service ministries as well. And so I'm glad to hear uh, that uh, Elizabeth Charity, your group, is doing that. Uh, Anybody else that would like to call and ask a question, please pick up your mm -hmm. phone and just call us. You can call us on our Washington, D.C. number if you'd like. I have that uh, phone here close by. Mm -hmm. Or you could call on the same number that Elizabeth called in on, or Emily. Call in on that 712-432-1690. Put in your access code, 399 Four three zero pound, and you can be connected with us. Ask these dear ladies a question, or give them maybe uh, some input into what you think is a good idea. So, go ahead, ladies, and share anything else you'd like to share. Okay, uh, what, I'd like to give one of one of my uh, success stories. Is we had uh, a water boy. If water boy had dropped out of school in middle in middle school. And I met him in the juvenile detention center. 
And uh, what happened was uh, I gave him a word of knowledge of what God had told me to tell him, that he wanted him to turn his negative energy into something very positive. And when he do that, he would change many people's lives. So when it was time for him to go to court, he asked me to come and go with him. And I did. And um, as I sit down, I prayed and asked the Lord to just touch the judge's heart. And the judge, indeed, decided to uh, 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 allow a Guadalupe to come and work with us. At that particular time, I, I actually had a mechanic, but because that's what a Guadalupe likes doing, is working on cars. Amen. So I had a mechanic that kicked him under his wing, and um, we, did a, we did a story about a Guadalupe as he was, uh, what he was learning, and he gave tips on how to do oil changes and stuff on the car. And in doing that, that auto mechanic actually got my $2,000 worth of referrals to come because of what he was doing. Amen. So in the businesses is listening, you know, you have the opportunity to get positive publicity and change a child's life. They was getting ready, and just this look. This young man was only, at the time, 13 years old. They was getting ready to send him to the state until he was 21 years old. Mm. Mm. Now, God. Where's he but the God intervened. God intervened. He now has a second chance on life. He's been out and out of trouble. He's now 20 years old. And, and he's been out of trouble. And he's... he's, he's He's working, and he's also now on that. He bought his own car, and he's replenishing or re repurposing his own little car. It's a, it's a 1965 Curit, and he is up, and he said, Mr. Kid, I'm doing my own car. He should have took me in for a ride in that car. But look, but look, what, but look what happened. And he, he would tell you, at the one from his years, and you by these services, I would still be in the ju I would still be in the state of juvie. Yeah, he he just learned more shenanigans to say he he got in with a bunch of other boys that were bad. Amen. So I think that's better. Amen. Well listen, let me let me ladies uh, interrupt again and, and share a story with you that I just received uh, in my email box and uh, I want to share this with you because it has to do with people getting their life back together and encouraging one another. This, uh, this email comes from a very, very uh, gorgeous, beautiful woman, inside and outside, and her name is Alveda, Dr. Alveda King. Dr. Alveda King is the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., and a great lady, and been on this show many times. She's not able to be on with me today, but uh, let me just share something with you that I believe will encourage you. She says, uh, a new B-U, B-E-E-Y-O-U, a new B-U by Dr. Alveda King. It encourages readers to seek a better world. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what Elizabeth Charity and, and Emily are doing. They're seeking a better world. In Atlanta, Georgia, while the world seems to be spiraling out of control, writer and author and entrepreneurial Alveda King believes that children and their families can discover hope and purpose from the old school lessons of days gone by. Drawing from lessons she learned as a child and later from her pastor and mentor, Dr. Alveda uses colorfully animated animal characters and children as well as all images of her mentor to deliver this simple and powerful message. And here's the message mm -hmm. that I believe Elizabeth and Emily and Alveda and Wiley or others are saying. Here's the message. It's okay to be you. Just be the best that you can be. 
And BU B- U is a little book that's available, and I would encourage you to go on uh, Amazon or wherever you get books, and it's called B-E-E, and they got a little B up there, a little honeybee, but it's called B-U, and it's a great little book. And it's right along the same lines of the things that Elizabeth Charity is doing, and uh, our dear sister on the line with us as well. So God bless you, ladies, and go ahead and share whatever else you'd like to share. Uh, Jen, I just want I just want you to help me help me create a miracle, help me create a miracle, help me to uh, 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 to change many lives and give a home and hope to them. Amen. But like I said, well, I'll certainly keep you in my prayers. That would be great. That would be great. And uh, some of the things that we would need is like furniture, printers, mentors, chairs, tables, computers. Because you see, I'm starting all over from scratch. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen... I'm starting all over, starting all over again. <laughs> yeah, amen. Ladies amen. and gentlemen, if you'd like to help this... I can relate to that. I was on this for some time. Yeah, and, and folks, if you'd, like to, if you'd like to get in touch with Elizabeth Charity uh, and help her start over, I love to be involved in a plan. And... Uh, it's God's plan, I believe, and I want to be a part of it, and I know you might be as well. So call Elizabeth Charity. Her phone number is 571-314-7503. Call her and say, hey, I'd like to help start over, help you start over, and I'd like to pray with you and for you and uh, maybe even make a donation to you. Whatever the Lord would lead yeah. you to do. Elizabeth Charity, thank you for being on with us. Go ahead now and tell us what else is on your heart. All right. I, uh, what What is um, actually going on is um, another testimony I want to share with you is that piece of property that we, uh, we want to get. Does God use that piece of property to have me to minister to the owner? And they both became saved. They were both elderly people. They became saved. And um, he went home. He and his wife both went home to glory after they received Jesus Christ. Amen. They both converted sickly. And, and, in, and in, the, um, in and out of the hospital. And God just let me go and minister to them. And so what had happened was um, the, the, the cannon was on the verge of taking away their um, their property from them. Mm. Um, so um, what I did was when I got a loan for $276,000 to be able to pay that taxes and to uh, actually obtain the property uh, for the student's facility, and that's what happened is it's, that loan is coming to a maturity now, and it needs to be paid by uh, this summer the first. And that's the reason why I would like very much, like I say, and you could just, and you could just talk, it'd be wonderful. But in the meantime, from uh, working with these two elder couples uh, at the time, and I, and I knew it was only God, it's what? Salvation to that whole household and reconciliation. Amen. Praise God. Because the whole family was at odds with each other, but God stepped in. They came together and um, it said that they died three days uh, apart. Hmm. And so they end up being buried together. So this would be, I mean, this would be a great present for them, you know, if Amen. you could say how, because if we again, if we had not borrowed the money, the cannon would have took that property, and um, and it kept a, it kept at that time it had paid the bills and kept a roof over their head as well. But now they're going home to glory. Praise God! <laughs> and um, oh, that's what I'm saying. We, we everything that we do, we we do do it at the word on the word of God, and we 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 just. Stepping out on total faith, just 
Amen. Some guy that out there that is listening to what I'm doing and that God is telling you, go into this ministry because it will multiply and bring a harvest of souls. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we're about here on the Wiley Drake Show with the Congressional Prayer Conference. We want you to sow into the ministries of others who are out there. Uh, and we want you to seek the Lord. Don't you dare give a dime to anybody unless you seek the Lord. Don't you listen Amen. to people, but you have to hear their needs, and then you take it before Amen. the Lord, and if God tells you to help, don't you dare not help. But this is an opportunity for you to be a part of this great entrepreneurial attitude and entrepreneurial ministry to help these men and women uh, get their life back together. And that's exactly what we need to do more of. So call Elizabeth Charity at 571-314-7503 and say, I want to talk to you further, and then whatever the Lord tells you to do, you do just that, not one bit more, not one bit less. But Elizabeth Charity uh, has been doing this and is serving the Lord, and we praise God for that. And Emily there is serving the Lord and seeking the Lord as well. Is there anyone Amen. else Anyone else that's come on the line with us? All right, ladies, we only have about 10 minutes left. Uh, either of you have anything else you'd like for us to pray about? Um, I know I, I, I don't need $250 for else to go to auction off all of my all of my personal stuff that I got in storage. So. Okay. All right. Well, we'll certainly. So everyone to be afraid. That'd be great. Amen. Well, like God knows. Pray. God knows your needs. God knows your needs, my sister. And there may be somebody out there that will say, "Hey, I need to help this lady," and uh, you can get her on the phone. Uh, you don't do it to me or through me. You just call her up. Her name is Elizabeth Charity, 571-314-7503. And uh, you evaluate and sense the Lord's presence in her. Don't take my word for it. Uh, do it over the phone with her personally. And then if the Lord lays it on your heart to help, uh, please do yeah. so. Please do so. And uh, her number is 571 314 7503. And by the way, I'm going to give you my phone number. You can call me anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and ask me to pray. While we were on this television program, a friend of mine, a local friend of mine, called. He forgot that I'm on television <laughs> at this hour. Uh, and so when I hang up, when we finish this program, I will call him back. And uh, I know him well enough to know that he's calling to say, Wiley, I know you're a prayer warrior, and I want to share a prayer request with you. And I'm going to share Amen. a prayer request with him as well. I'm going to ask him to put on his prayer list my new sister, Elizabeth Charity, as I've already asked him uh, to put my sister uh, Emily on there. And uh, so he, he'll be praying for you, and uh, mm. we, that's how we operate around here. And uh, anything else? Lord, we come before you for provisions. Mm. Lord, you said you give us a vision, and then you give us the provision. And so we thank you mm. for that. And I pray for the funds that are needed for Elizabeth Charity there and whatever uh, our other dear sister there. Uh, needs. Lord, provide their needs in a way that will amaze them. It shouldn't, but it will, because we know, Lord, if we don't Amen. aren't careful, we'll look at the circumstances. And we know you own a cattle on a thousand hills. And Lord, we know you can provide for all of our needs, no matter what they are. So ladies, what Amen. else what else can we pray for you about?
Well, ladies and gentlemen, I would ask you to pray for something uh, actually in the future just a little bit, and that is on Monday, it's only a few days away, but on Monday the 23rd, that's a very special day because there is a pastor, my pastor, at my church. Now, I pastor a church here in California, and I'm the senior pastor here, but I, uh, on the recommendation of my dear sweet wife, I got a new pastor mentor about five or six years ago named James David Manning, and he is in Harlem pastoring a church there, and I joined his church and have been a part of his ministry, and and uh, he has blessed me and led me and trained me. And in fact, later the church said they wanted to make me an assistant pastor, and I became one. But I say all of that to say, my dear pastor, James David Manning, in Harlem, New York, needs your prayer. Now, next Monday at 6.30, p.m. Eastern Time, we're going to open this prayer line again, and we're going to be praying for the ATLA, A-T-L-A-H, ATLA World Missionary Church, and the pastor, James David Manning. Because, you see, the uh, Sodomites have decided that they're going to do a boycott of Dr. Manning's church, and they're going to be out in force at 6.30 Eastern Time. That will be 3.30 here in California. So at 3.30, I can't be with my pastor in New York, but I can be here, boots on the ground, and prayer in the air. So I would encourage you next Monday at 6.30, call in on this prayer line and pray for that church there in Harlem that is being attacked. And I know God will bless you for it. And we thank the Lord for Dr. Manning and his church and his congregation there. They've taken a strong stand for a traditional one man, one woman marriage till death do us part. And the Sodomites in New York are fighting that and they don't like that. And so they're going to uh, be attacking that church. So join us next Monday for that prayer time if you would. Now ladies... Anything else you'd like to share? All right. That means everybody is through, so I'm going to uh, wrap this up just a little bit early tonight. Uh, I'm going to go uh, ahead and go off because uh, uh, no one else is calling. If someone, I'll give just a couple of minutes, and if no one else calls, I'm going to tell my producer... David Myers, but before I do that to him, I want to have him give out his telephone number so you can call in in reference to David's tabernacle. David, give that number. Area code 657-271-9360. Area code 657-271-9360. And if you're calling for prayer, uh, feel free. If you live locally and within distance and you're homeless and you need shelter, um, come to this church and go through the security office first. If they're full or can't take you, then the tabernacle is for you. And um, just come in and we'll take care of you. Amen. Thank you, David, for that. Anyone else on the prayer line have anything they'd like to share? No, I just, um, this is Emily again. I just wanted to um, share that just everybody say that we'd be free of what? Amen. Amen. we've got that's uh, trying to take away our liberties. So Amen. That's where I'm being Alright, Emily, thank you so much. God bless you and have a great, great evening. And we're going to end the program at that note. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.